Today I'm going to show you how to take your Behringer HM300 from this to this. This is Arts und Krauts. The first order of business is removing all the screws from this charming pink plastic case, including the spring-loaded switch and the four knobs so you can remove the outer assembly. There are three screws holding down the circuit board, as well as four screws holding the back plate. I used this flat black spray paint, but I didn't prime because I'm a dummy. I also painted too thick, so I would recommend using thin coats and letting them dry between each session. I used three coats of spray paint and I sprayed way too close. This is not the way to get the best results. I recommend thin coats from a further distance. This clip is purely for your entertainment purposes. I printed the lettering on vinyl decals. You have to use a laser printer if you want to print on vinyl. But mine is only black and white, so I colored the letters in with an orange highlighter. Next, we're going to paint the knobs. I hand painted these because I didn't have the right color of orange spray paint handy, though that would have been far easier and quicker. So I mixed up some regular acrylic orange paint and I gave them about four coats using a hairdryer in between to dry them more quickly. This was time consuming and a pain. All right, finished painting already. I'm waiting. I painted the edge of the lid with the acrylic paint as well, but it looked terrible, so I sanded it to make it flat, and that looked terrible too. I don't recommend doing this. Next, I scraped all that crap off with a knife, and the result was also terrible. I kept it because I thought maybe it would be cool. It is not cool. I then shellacked it. Another bad idea. Do not shellac it. It is shiny and gross and sticky. I later fixed this, as you will see by the end of the video. Here I am applying the labels, as you can see. However, they are not shiny like the shellac, so I shellac those again, and that was also a bad idea. I then reassembled everything, hoping that maybe I would like the results when the circuit board was back in. It did not change the appearance of the pedal. At this point, I was still too invested to strip back the paint and start over, but I did eventually anyways. However, I'm glad I put the pedal together to show it off so you can see what not to do and how we can fix it in the following segment. The foot switch is spring-loaded and is a pain to get on and off. Just stick a screwdriver or other poking implement and loosen the spring. I put black lines on the knobs using a micron pen, which worked well, and then I sand it here with some very high grit sandpaper to try to reduce the shininess. This had very little effect. And here is the completed pedal in its first revision. It's shiny and gross and it felt gross and I didn't like touching it. I would not recommend following this part of the instructional video. If you like the look, I urge you, please reconsider. You won't like the look though because it's ugly, and it has fingerprint marks on it from the shellac, because I touched it before it was dry. Do not do this. Do not use shellac. If you're going to clear coat it, please use something else. Thank you. Now after sitting with it for a day, and hating it, I decided to take out my knife and sandpaper, and completely strip off all the paint, and sand it down to a flat surface. Here it is, after being attacked with a knife and mercilessly sanded. 
It now looks better than it did when I painted it. I applied several thin coats of primer, allowing them ample drying time in between. I then applied a single thin coat of the flat black enamel paint, and I allowed it to dry overnight. In the morning, I decided I was pleased with the results and to not continue painting it. I thought it looked cool. I like how the orange shows through the black because it's a black and orange petal, and this way, it's more than just a black spray painted petal. It's unique. Previously, I had left on this rubber badge, but it did not take to the paint well. So I used paint thinner and I scrubbed at it and now it smells like paint thinner, but at least it looks okay. I hot glued it back on after the painting this time. And I squeezed it. And I squeezed it some more. I cut the edges from the decals. These are the second batch, and I'm glad I printed two. I stick them on the petal, using my fingers, and rub them until they're flat. Here's how it looks. I stick on the other one. Here I am coloring it in with more orange highlighter to darken it. Unfortunately, this highlighter is not that great, and it looks kind of yellow in the end. Maybe you would have better results with a different marker. Then I reassembled the petal. Being careful to remember, oh, there it is, the grounding thing. I applied screws and tightened until tight. Stick the 9 volt thing through the pedal enclosure top. Don't forget any of the screws here. You'll need those. Here is the spring loaded action for the pedal switch. Make sure to stuff everything in good and pop that bad boy on. Apply the knobs in the correct position, all maxed, and admire your work. It looks pretty good this time. It's not perfect, but it's homemade. It certainly looks cooler than hot pink, though I suppose that's debatable. A hot pink HM2 is pretty cool too. But now it's Halloween themed, and it looks like it's properly ready to throw down with some Swedish death metal. Stay tuned for part two in which I have a deep dive of tone demonstrations for you.